What happens when you overclock the Ryzen 5 1600X as far as you can get it within reason, of course, on air, and you put it up against Intel's Core i7-6800K 6-core CPU? Well, that's what we wanted to look at today. So what we did, we took the newly launched Ryzen 5 1600X, paired it up with a GTX 1080, and good motherboard and RAM, and then we did the same thing for the 6800K to see kind of which one came down to it. Uh, if you're looking beyond a quad core, these are really your only options that you have if you want to stay in the six core range. Pricing is a bit obscured on this, either side. Uh, the Ryzen is going to be obviously the cheaper option, whereas the uh, 6800K comes on the X99 platform, a bit more robust. But let's get to what components we use, the configuration, and then we'll take a look at the benchmarks to see where they both land. Looking at the Ryzen 5 1600X first, we have the Ryzen 5 1600X overclocked to 4.0 gigahertz across all six cores, cooled by Hyper 212 Evo with 16 gigabytes of G-Scale Flarex DDR4 3200CL14. So good, good stuff. And all of that is on the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard. So looking at a combination of not a whole lot of money there. RAM's probably one of the more expensive pieces to that component. But moving over to the i7-6800K, we have that CPU overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. And I know, and still on a Hyper 212 Evo, and I know somebody out there is gonna go, Keith, you gave them a 100 megahertz advantage. Seriously guys, it's, it's 100 megahertz. I went through a reasonable overclock on both CPUs with reasonable temperatures and everything else. The catch here is the memory is only at DDR4-2666. Now that is quad channel versus dual channel, so we'll see how that plays out in the gaming and CPU performance benchmarks. And that is on an ASUS X99A2 motherboard. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at what happens in the CPU benchmarks versus the gaming benchmarks paired up with the GTX 1080 Founders Edition, all at 1080p. I know, I know, somebody out there is gonna be mad about the 1080p part, but so it is what it is. All right, so here we go. Let's jump into those results and then we'll meet you back at the end of the conclusion and talk about it a little bit more. All right, guys, so there are the results. CPU-wise, they were neck and neck. In fact, if you didn't know which system you were running, you wouldn't be able to pick them apart. As far as the gaming, though, there were some instances where the i7-6800K had a sizable lead on the Ryzen 5 1600X. Now, the catch is, for those, it's really games that I don't know that a lot of people are playing a whole lot of, and but the games that are outside of Watch Dogs 2, but then that begs the question how many people are actually playing that rather than benchmarking it. 
but for the price, it's really undeniable that the 1600X is quite the performer, keeping up, exceeding, and matching almost in all ways the Broadwell E6800K. Six core. Now, I know in the future, eventually Skylake X and KB Lake X, well, that will be a thing. But for right now, if you're looking for a six core modern setup, this is your option. So it's honestly, it's kind of an easy choice if you're looking at the price. But if you're looking for expandability, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a tough one, guys. Um, but with all of that aside, it does beg the question. Would you guys like to see us change out our test system behind me? See, we've been using the 6800K for so long because it's been relatively consistent and reliable as new games come out, new graphics cards come out. It's been our most reliable one. We have a 7700K and a Maximus non-hero, but I'm going to be quite frank, uh, it's flaky at best. Uh, results are unreliable, in my opinion. That's why it's not being included anymore in these tests. Um, but let us know down in the comments. We'll try and drop a straw poll in the description there if you wanted to vote on that, whether we stick with the 6800K or we move over to the 1600X. 1600X being more affordable price-wise, so there may be more people in the future running it. We don't know, but we're going to let that one be up to our viewers and our readers whether you'd like to see us move off of the Broadwell E system over onto the 1600X for our graphics card test bench as well as our gaming performance test bench. Or maybe you'd like to see us keep both and just work me twice as hard. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have put that one in there. But these have been the results. This is kind of where the six cores shake out at this time. And if you found this video informative or entertaining in the least, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. And this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and we'll catch you in the next video.